Hi everybody, my name is Bree and welcome back to my channel, Bree Zarts. Okay everybody, so for today's video, I decided to tackle some things that I found on Pinterest. Now I'm on Pinterest all the time and I get tons of inspiration from what other people make and then of course I just you know put my own spin on it and create it myself and that's the best thing about YouTube videos or Pinterest or even going on to your favorite online store like Kirkland's because you can get tons of inspiration to make beautiful things for your home and this video is sponsored by Skillshare, but I will talk about them a little bit later. So of course you guys, as usual, I've used mostly Dollar Tree items, some items from Dollarama, and with that being said, let's jump into the first DIY. All right, here we go with DIY number one, and this one was inspired by Wendy Drake, on Pinterest she only has 248 followers you guys go give her some love I will have it linked down in my description box and what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna use one of these hanging shelves that you can get at the Dollar Tree this is the bigger of the two sizes and I am just going to use my black chalk paint by folk art and uh, magically paint this up on all the sides, the edges, everything. And you only need one coat of this paint, you guys. It covers so well. And so now I am using these jumbo popsicle sticks that you can get at Walmart. And I'm pretty sure I used 11 of them to create my keys here for this piano. And using my miter shears, I'm just clipping off the very, very end of the rounded part there. So you can see I did leave a little bit of the curve on there because if you look at a piano, the keys are kind of, you know, curved on the on the edges so this actually worked out really perfectly and I'm just using my sanding block just sanding that down nice and smooth and there you can see my curves there of my piano key and I am going to do that to all of these popsicle sticks here so I'm just marking it off and then I'm going to use my miter shears on each one and cut them all down so there we go. And now I'm just going to see how nice they look. Look at that. And so now I'm just going to line this up and mark off. You can see there I did a little bit of an overhang there for the piano keys. And I'm just gonna mark off where I need to cut all of these down. So what I end up doing here is I'm just going to, you know, smush them all together there and make sure that they're nice and straight and then just use my masking tape tape around them and I am going to use my miter box to cut these all down to size so that they're all perfectly even and the same size so I'm just using my tape going around taping them up and then we're just gonna chop them off camera <laughs> And there we go. <laughs> and of course, just using the sanding block and just sanding them all down nice and smooth. And so here I'm just lining these up. They don't go like right to the edge. I, there's just a little teeny bit of an overhang on each side, but it does not matter at all. It looks fantastic. Now using my white chalk paint, I am going to paint all of those up. And there we go. Nice and white, my ivory keys. Don't they look spectacular? So now I'm just using some hot glue and I'm just gonna adhere all of these piano keys to that wooden plank there. And just so you guys know, I am actually making this for my choir director. I'm part of the church choir and the woman who directs the choir, she is like a second mom to me. I absolutely love her. So I thought that this project would be perfect for her. 
And so now I'm just going to use some of my antique wax and a paper towel, and we're just gonna age these keys just a tiny, tiny little bit. You know how when there's like an older piano and the, um, the keys look a little bit, you know, worn and, and kind of faded and whatever, um, this was the perfect technique to get that look for sure. And so these tumbling tower blocks, these ones are actually from Dollarama. They are bigger than the ones that you can get at the Dollar Tree. So you can see the size difference there. I thought that these were much more appropriate for this project, but if you can't find them, of course you can use the ones from Dollar Tree if you, if you can't find these ones. And so there we have our piano keys and shablam, uh, they are black. <laughs> And so here, I'm just going to use my sanding block and I'm just gonna distress these keys down just a little bit to bring out the wood underneath. Again, we are making this kind of look really old and worn. So this is the trick to get that look. And we're just gonna do that to all of the keys there, just like that. And then of course, using my hot glue, just going along, making sure that the black keys are centered on the white keys. And you guys know, you've seen pianos before. You do two black keys and then three black keys and then two black keys. And so here I uh, cut this deco off on my Cricut and it says, it is well with my soul. Now, this is actually a song that we sing um, in choir. It's absolutely beautiful. So I thought the phrase on the piano keys from the inspiration piece was, this is perfect for my choir director. I just love her so much. And so just putting that down, using some Mod Podge. Um, I'm just gonna seal this so that the paint, when I actually go in with my black chalk paint so that it won't bleed. Um, I use this technique all the time, actually. Sometimes you can use this the under color, like the color that you're going over top, but because I had already distressed the keys, I couldn't do that, so the Mod Podge works perfectly. And then of course we're using my dab brush and just dab, dab, dab all along this stencil. I like to use this dabby brush um, because it doesn't give full coverage and I wanted it to look, you know, weathered and, and kind of rustic. So this worked perfectly. And there we go. You can see how there are no bleeds when you use that Mod Podge. I absolutely love that trick use it all the time and there we go you guys like how gorgeous is that i love it Okay, everyone, so I know this is kind of a costume change, but I just wanted to pop in here really quickly to talk about Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where thousands of people come together to explore their creative journeys. Now, I know that anybody who is watching my videos, all of you breezers out there, you are all creative. And Skillshare is a great place to expand your creativity. From photography to illustration to DIY home decor, Skillshare has thousands of classes to fit your needs and interests. Skillshare's classes are ad-free, you guys, so that you can get into the zone and allow your creativity to soar. There are new premium classes that are launched every single week, so there's always something new for you to explore on Skillshare. So one of the most recent classes that I've taken is iPhone photography, how to take 
Pro Photos on your iPhone by Dale McManus. And I learned so much about how to use my iPhone camera to its full capabilities, like composition, using natural light, and how to create depth in my photography. This class are really up my game, you guys, with using my iPhone camera. So, special offer alert! The first thousand people to click the link down in my description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can start exploring your creativity today. And I want to send a huge shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And with that said, you guys, let's get back into those projects. Okay, and here we go with DIY number two, and this one was inspired by Decor Home Ideas on Pinterest. Again, that will be linked down in my description box, and this is probably one of my favorite things that I've ever made, you guys. Legit, it's so gorgeous. So I'm just using one of these wood slices that I got off Facebook Marketplace, and I just drew out a mason jar. Um, completely free-handed it. Um, I don't have a template for you at all. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but it's actually fairly easy just to draw out a mason jar to the scale of whatever you are using to do this string art. So I am just taking my handy dandy uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders hammer, go riders, and just pounding in some finishing nails here. And just going along um, wherever I feel that a nail is appropriate. I believe I do three going down on each side of the top of the mason jar. And then, you know, just a whole bunch all the way around the perimeter um, to get this string art going. It's just, oh, this is so stunning. I just love how this turned out. It's so pretty. So you can see here, just finishing off, putting the nails into this wood. And if you don't have a wood slice, you guys, you can use pretty much any piece of wood that you can find in your garage, like anything. You could even use like a two by four to do something like this. And so I'm just pulling off the paper here to reveal the nail pattern underneath. And there we go, we're ready to string our string. So the uh, string that I'm using, it's actually from Dollarama. It's like, these are mini yarns. Um, I'm sure that you can find these at any craft shop, um, uh, you know, any yarn that you wanna use, any kind of thread, anything. And so I'm just starting it off by tying a knot up in the corner there. And so, and it's a double knot here. So we're gonna double knot that on our first nail, and then we're gonna start our string art. So on the top there, oh, what I'm gonna do first. So we're gonna go around the entire perimeter. You can see there, I'm taking the string and I'm winding it around the nail in the same direction for each one. So I'm starting going on the inside and then turning it around and this is going to create the border for our little mason jar here so i'll go all the way around going the same direction just like that and then we're going to go the completely opposite way all the way around again and <laughs> sometimes if you lose tension, because you want to make sure that this is nice and tight, it will unravel on you. It happened to me a few times for sure, but just keep that tension and continue to wrap the yarn around all of these nail heads. And so now just filling in the mason jar, whichever which way you want to go to fill it in. You can do it as thick as you want. You can do it as sparse as you want. This is where your creativity can completely flow and you can fill this in however you want to until your eyes are happy, you guys. <laughs> Up and down and criss and cross and all over the place. 
I absolutely love this project. You guys are gonna have to let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Pretty please, I would love to know. I've done um, one other string art as well. It was for Canada Day last year. So um, I'll link that up in the cards here so that you guys can check that video out as well. And so now um, going along the neck, I guess, of the mason jar, just going, you know, straight across, um, filling it in, but making sure we're just going, you know, in the horizontal direction um, for the top there. Filling it in, filling it in. And then of course, when we're all done, we are going to make a knot. This will happen eventually. Looks like I'm kind of struggling. There we go. So we're going to uh, finish on the same nail that we started on, tie a knot there, a double knot, clip off the excess, and that is it. Check out our mason jar, you guys. Look at it, it looks so good. And so I'm just using one of the Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks because I want this to stand up. So this is going to give it um, a little bit more stability. So actually I'm not using one, I'm using two. And I'm just going to hot glue those together. And then we're going to glue those to the back of our um, wood slice here, just to kind of give it a little stand so that it will stand up on my shelf and look absolutely gorgeous. And so now I'm using one of these roses. This is also from Dollarama, but of course you guys, you can use whatever flowers you want. I just thought that this was so pretty. Clipped off a leaf, put the little bud in there. That is it for this project. It's really super, super easy. Doing the string art, it's, it's, a little bit time consuming, but it's so gorgeous. Oh my, I just, I cannot, I cannot get over it. Okay, everybody, I hope that you're enjoying these DIYs today that were inspired by things that I found on Pinterest. I'm just popping in here really quickly just to remind you that if you like home decor on a budget, you know, things that look kind of high end, but you didn't spend very much money on it, then you've come to the right place. So make sure you tap that like button, make sure you subscribe and set your notifications to all so that you never miss one of my uploads. And I want to send a huge shout out to all of my breezers out there, my old subscribers, my new subscribers, and everybody in between. I love you guys so much. I thank you so much for your support. And I just think that you're absolutely amazing. Now, with that said, let's get back into those projects. Okay, you guys, this is the last one, DIY number three. And this is inspired by Lisa Loftus. She has 842 followers, you guys. Go and follow her. Her link will be down in the description box. And so I'm just using these two um, frames that I got at Dollarama. You can obviously get them at Dollar Tree as well. And I'm just taking off the canvas, taking out the staples, and then just sanding that down so it's nice and smooth. And so what we're going to do, we're going to create this adorable little lantern. It's so cute, you guys. And so I'm just taking my white chalk paint, going to paint up all of the frame, the inside, the outside, the edges, like the whole shebang on both of them. And then I'm going to grab my paper towel and my antique wax and do the same technique that I did with the piano keys just to, you know, age it, weather it, you know, distress it, the whole nine yards. You guys catch what I'm, catch what I'm throwing. <laughs> and so there you can see, I cut 
um, a slit in that one frame so that I could thread them together like this. I did use my miter box and um, just kind of, you know, pushed it through and then used my hot glue so that they um, went back together there. And now just using my hot glue, we are going to adhere those two frames together just like that. Perfect. And so these little wooden cube beads I got at um, the Dollar Tree. And they, they these were the perfect size to make up for that space on the bottom there. So I'm just going to uh, glue those to each side of the the one frame that's kind of raised from the bottom and then I'm just going to use my white chalk paint and give those a coat and then of course distress them down um, just like I did with the rest of the frame with my antique wax and so this is just a wooden circle that I got at Dollar Tree um, it came in a pack I think there was like a square and circle or squares circles um, I don't know, other shapes potentially, <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. But just painting that up with my white chalk paint as well, making sure you hit all of the edges and the bottom, get that whole thing painted up. I'm showing you a lot of painting this little circle for some reason. I thought it was important. <laughs> and now of course we're gonna use the antique wax, you can see there, I'm just, you know, throwing that on those um, little legs that we have going there and uh, completely, that was out of frame, but all good. You guys know what I'm doing. And then throwing some of that antique wax onto that circle as well. So you can do this with a like some bigger frames if you want to, if you want to make this like on a bigger scale. Um, you do whatever you want. This is only for inspiration. So I'm using one of those eye hook um, things and I'm just screwing that into the top here. And you can see that I did hot glue that disc to the bottom. I guess I just didn't show it, but the disc is hot glued onto the bottom there. And now this beautiful little wicker heart I got at Dollarama. And these um, wooden beads I got off of Amazon in a whole package of a gajillion different sizes. And these are pretty teeny, but they, um, they work out really, really well for this project. I did paint them up with my white chalk paint. And I'm, I'm stringing six of them, but I don't need six. You will see in a second that I remove um, a couple of them because it was just too long where that heart was, was dangling down there. But we're gonna string those on and then we are going to uh, attach that to the eye hook at the top of our little lantern here. So just knotting that on there. And then you can see here, I will be cutting that off. And then I use a little tiny bit of hot glue so that I can adhere the beads to the top. And here I removed two of the beads because it was just too long. And now we're going to attach this heart, this beautiful wicker heart <clears throat> onto the the string there with the beads on top. This is so pretty. I just love this. It's so cute. It's in my it's in my tray right now. Just so darn cute. And so now we are going to use some of this lamb's ear. You can get this at Walmart. I've also um, purchased this off of Amazon. Just so you know, I did have one of my lovely subscribers send me some though. So that was lovely. Thank you so much. And we're just going to glue all of these pieces onto the, that bottom circle just to cover that all up you know, using some random leaves, making sure that it looks really nice and, and full at the bottom there. And you could also like without the heart there, you could put a candle on that little, like you could do whatever you want, you guys. Sky's the limit, but that's it. Like how freaking cute is this? It's so, so pretty. I absolutely love how it turned out. Pinterest, you guys, go on Pinterest. Oh, 
All right, everybody, that is it for our Pinterest inspired craft projects today. I absolutely love how these came out. And you guys know, like, oh my goodness, there's so many talented crafters out there. And I draw inspiration from so many different places. So, you know, if you're not on Pinterest, get your butt on there because, man, there are some beautiful projects to discover. I would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video today and a huge shout out to all of you. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you more than you know. Make sure you head down to the comments and let me know which one of these projects was your favorite. And if you like what you see, do me a solid tap that like button, maybe subscribe, tell your friends, you know, all of that jazz. Stay tuned for the gag reel. Bye guys. Hmm. What am I gonna say? You didn't put any lips on. Hmm. Should I put lips on? I don't know. I think it's fine. Let's just, let's just roll with it. Let's roll with it. Okay, I'm gonna like this. Ooh, 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 ooh. How's that? Is that a good angle? It's different every time, you guys, because I have to haul all my stuff up from the craft room. You know, I wish I had just a recording place, but you know, got to deal with what we got to deal with, right? Now, with that said, you <laughs> okay? Yeah, I did it, you guys. I did it. I can't not. I'm so indecisive about the hair. Like one day, I'm like, I'm growing out my bangs. I'm gonna do it. It's gonna be fabulous and then it gets in my eyes and then I'm like this is annoying and then I chop them off so we're back to bangs um I don't know I like the bangs whoa geez Louise like calm calm down girl what's happening here calm down Are you smashing things smashing things around there's a lawnmower going How's that? How's that for my close-up, Mr. DeVille? Okay, so we are doing some Pinterest-inspired DIYs today. I am so excited. Like, I, I'm excited. I'm excited. Okay, you guys. So what we are doing today is we're going to do some... <laughs> All right, you guys, so for today's video, we are gonna tackle some Pinterest-inspired DIYs. So I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love going onto Pinterest, getting some, you know, inspiration. It's the same thing that I wanna do for you guys that so many creators do for me. So we're gonna tackle, we're gonna tackle, we're tackling, 